You are being slaughtered and you don't realize it. It all happened already. It is underway. And everybody's waiting for that. All the assets are down 90%. It can't happen. It simply can't happen because it all happened in 2008. In 2008, the world stopped. The whole debt system blew up. We had to have a debt jubilee of resetting all government debts around the world at zero so we could afford to service it. We've kept rates low. We've been then using the balance sheet of all of the central banks just to pay the interest on the debt from the previous cycles. This is this everything code thesis that you and I have talked about. So we are paying the debts by printing money, pure debasement. The system broke in 2008. We then changed the financial system with the Basel III agreements, which forced the banks to lend less and to hold more treasuries. Why? There's going to be a lot of supply of treasuries. The whole system, everybody's aware that it's broken. It broke. So what is going on now? Well, for it to actually broke, the down 90%, it's all going to be 1929 again. Can't you just see it? You're missing the point. They're debasing the currency by 15% a year. It adds up to a staggering loss of wealth. It is an a tax that you don't see. 15% a year debasement is easier than increasing your tax rate 15%, which is politically unacceptable, which is what they need to do to pay the debt. Traditional financial markets are broken, currency is debasing at an alarming rate, and you are getting poorer day by day. It is time to stake your claim in the future of the financial system and participate in the wealth creation opportunity of a generation. You don't know this, but we are really, really early still in Bitcoin. Get in now before it's too late. This is the latest message out from Raul Paul. Recently, Raul Paul shared his thoughts on the impact of currency debasement and the current economic conditions. He highlighted Bitcoin's exceptional performance, stating that it has outperformed all other assets in history. One key aspect Raul discussed is Bitcoin scarcity, which sets it apart from every other traditional asset. He explained the various use cases of Bitcoin, illustrating how it can be used beyond just an investment, potentially transforming the entire financial system. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Raul debunks Peter Schiff's critiques of Bitcoin. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto world, I send out a daily 5-minute crypto newsletter that covers expert predictions, on-chain data breakdowns, and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email, and join over 50,000 others to become a better crypto investor right now. Now here's why Rob Paul thinks that a currency collapse is on the horizon and why the financial system is completely broken. I think we will both agree that things are pretty screwed up. We'll all agree, right? What is really screwed up is the world is massively in debt. The workforce is shrinking. Population growth is slowing down. It's slowing down GDP growth. So there's not enough GDP growth to pay or service the amount of debts out there. And what we found since 2008, that the answer to this debt issue has been printing of more money, debasement of currency. People think of it in terms of, at first they think it's gonna be inflation as in the price of CPI goes up, but it's actually not. It's actually something much worse is wages don't rise, but assets go up because optically you're debasing the currency. Your future self is getting poorer because assets are all about storing wealth for future deferred consumption. But what's happening is you can't afford as much of that now. And so your future self is in fact poorer. So a classic example is a 35 year old now in the United States, getting married, having kids. A house is very expensive now. Compared to when Peter and I were young, it was relatively cheap, three times incomes. Now it's like 10 times incomes. So there's no real way of getting up the ladder. The equity market is much more expensive. Your kind of percentage share of the S&P is so much less. So the advantages that your parents had are not available to you. Many of us from the macro world started thinking, okay, we need to find what is this hedge? What is the right way of doing this? And that's where crypto, which I've been involved in for a long time, started to really fit in here because it offers a bunch of 
ways that the financial system can use it in an overly indebted system where you've got a collateral and then like 30 uses of that same collateral. So nobody owns anything. You own a fraction of what you think you own in an indebted system. Same with a bank. You have money in a bank, it's not your money. It's actually the bank's money and that's been proven time and time again. Bank bail-ins in Europe were particularly bad. So we've got a broken financial system and the blockchain rails are something that's actually very useful. We can figure out who owns what at any point with instant settlement. So it reduces a lot of the risk of the settlement layer, but also you got you gave the rise of cryptocurrencies, which also have this supply and demand dynamic that's interesting. There's a limited supply and it has the properties somewhat of digital gold. And that's worked very well. If you look at that, because you've got this technology adoption of the blockchain, plus this store of value or this collateral layer, it's massively outperformed everything. So it's been a phenomenally good asset, even with these massive drawdowns on route. We have enormous drawdowns, monstrous, and still it's the best performing asset in all recorded history, almost on any time horizon. So it makes it very difficult to allocate any money in anything else. Um, and that's why I've struggled. I just do every chart against Bitcoin or every chart against the Fed balance sheet and try and say, okay, well, what goes up? Gold has actually gone down versus the Fed balance sheet. I don't think, I think that's more of a temporary state of affairs than a permanent state of affairs. Again, I'm actually not an anti-gold person whatsoever. I just think when you've got technology plus gold, call it that as a narrative, you're always going to do better. And in our job to help people navigate this journey, if you're 65 years old, gold does a great job for you. If you're 35 year old, you ain't going to get anywhere. You're going to have to, you have to gain wealth, not just protect wealth because you don't have it when you're young. And that's the difference. This is the core difference to me is there's a suitability factor for different types of people and you're trying to solve different right. problems. Well, we kind of have a tokenized gold and it fucks everything up. It's called the futures market. That, because still gold is a very physical asset, as Peter rightly says, and to move it around the world is difficult. So you're moving claims around the world, even on blockchain. Now, as far as I'm aware, the Macau exchange for gold is gonna tokenize. There's a bunch of people tokenizing gold. We've seen gold things, great. It's maybe a more efficient settlement rail or an ownership rail, but it's not instant transfer of the actual asset itself. If I transfer you a Bitcoin, it goes straight into your ledger wallet, let's say, and you own it. It's yours. It's self-custody. Gold is more difficult to self-custody just because of its size. Now, many people around the world do self-custody their gold, and that's fine too. Again, I don't have an issue, but in a world of 8 billion people where we live on the internet, it actually is nice to have an asset. And Peter's absolutely right. We've memed a trillion dollar currency into existence. We've memed it. It's just human narrative. But guess what? So is gold. So is everything that we do, including religion. Everything is a meme. We believe that this digital asset that is scarce is valuable. Peter's right. There are other blockchains that are much more effective. And by owning those cryptocurrencies, they're not currencies and this confusion over, there's all these cryptocurrencies, they're all competing against Bitcoin. They're not. These are networks where you own a tokenized part of a network and the network generates fees, you make money. It's like owning shares, essentially, but somewhat different. Bitcoin itself is because we believe it to be true. It has the sorts of properties that we as humans think of as holding value, as does gold. Certain other things don't. Paper physically doesn't, right? Even paper money, but paper itself, it destroys. Copper over time destroys. Silver over time erodes, but gold doesn't. So gold has this long-term value. In a digital world, those properties have been mimicked, but even honed down. Well, when the price is high enough, the gold price becomes cyclical because the miners will find new ways of getting gold out of the ground. And so supply adjusts and brings down price, which is fine. In Bitcoin, you can't do it. So it's really a function of demand in everything in Bitcoin. So it's the function of how many people 
believe this to be true, that this asset has value. And when you go back and say, well, people shouldn't do this. Nobody has the right to tell people what they should or should not do. This is the best performing asset the world has ever seen. It is up 6 million percent. Since we first put it on Real Vision in 2013, 2014, it's up 380,000 percent. Wow. Bitcoin is a thousand 10 years from now. You could still make the argument it's the best performing asset in the world if you want to start from that point in time. That's a little bit disingenuous because it actually is the best performing asset in the world on a 10 year, five year, four year, three year, two year, one year basis. Well, it can't be on a three year basis because it's about unchanged. Question is, has Bitcoin performed very well over its time, lifetime? The answer is provably, mathematically, yes. That's okay. Doesn't mean you have to well, like no, it. it doesn't mean you have to like it, but it's provenly gone up more than any other asset. You were less fixed on your view and you saw this new thing and saw that people also thought of it in the same kind of way that people thought about gold. And doesn't it make you go, yeah, that's fascinating. I wonder if this, this really could work in a digital age. But instead, you'll say, no, no chance. They shouldn't buy it. They're all idiots. What makes you so sure? Like, I would never say about gold, that's stupid. I would say, I understand it. Of course, gold is interesting. But it's a weird way to approach it, is here is literally tens of millions, <laughs> if not hundreds of millions of people owning something, and you're saying, they're all morons. I'm right. Just using technology, ChatGPT4, and the World Gold Council, seven and a half to 10 percent of gold supply every year. So that is an element of humanity. But what you're touching on is, OK, the technology itself, there is some elements of that. If we believe it's scarce enough, we can attach a value to it. That's memetics. There is also the elements of, OK, the Bitcoin mining itself has created opportunities. So, for example, we are seeing in the Middle East using gas flare offs, which is wasted energy reusing that energy to create tokens, which then are used to release that. We're seeing it with load balancing. So there's an element of, it's a way of sharing electricity in a world that doesn't do that very easily. But it's also something more. The physical property here is actually the physical property of the blockchain itself. The reason this goes up so fast is not because of mania, it's because it's an adoption of a technology, it's Metcalfe's law. So what you're finding is networks, as they gain adoption, price gets a bit crazy. Now, in 20 years time, will Bitcoin price be as crazy? Highly unlikely because it gets to maturity and it looks more like a mature asset. So people get confused. What we're doing here is saying, what Bitcoin's price is doing is saying, yes, there's the element of mimetics. It has this scarce value. Nothing in the digital world has scarcity. So this is interesting for humanity. It's not proven, it's not had a thousand years of history. It's interesting. It also has interesting properties in how it can reuse wasted energy or rebalance energy loads. Okay, that's interesting. But also, what is the future expected value of the blockchain itself? Now, we may say today, or we would have said a year ago, well, Bitcoin blockchain is not very useful. But now we've started to see these ordinals and inscriptions, which is using the blockchain for other things. So we don't know what the future of the Bitcoin blockchain is. But if enough money is attracted to it, it will create other use cases because it's a network with a lot of people on it. So network value is a weird thing for somebody who doesn't live in the digital world. In a digital world, that's what's created all the value in Amazon, Google, Apple, Facebook. It's what's creating the digital, the value in Tesla, what the value is in ChatGPT, it's network effects. So we've got this incredible asset, which has these scarce properties that solves a problem we don't have, that we had in the digital world. It has some physical properties because what we can do with electricity and how it's mined. And then it has the future expected value of the network. That to me makes it a very interesting asset. Now the question is, does it exist in 50 years time, 100 years time? 
I don't know. No, nobody knows. Would humans use gold in a hundred years' time? Nobody knows. So there's Raul Paul with his thoughts on the current state of traditional financial markets. He's revealing a clear picture of a system in trouble, where the value of money is shrinking every day. Raul is urging action, encouraging people to grab hold of the future of finance and seize the chance to create wealth. He's stressing that we're still at the beginning of Bitcoin adoption, so it's important to get involved quickly before the chance slips away. Overall, Ralph's message resonates with the importance of seizing the opportunity presented by Bitcoin's emergence. He encourages individuals to educate themselves about its potential and consider integrating it into their financial strategies before it's too late. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.